Welcome to the Play World Cup. I'm James. And I'm Jason. And we are bringing you the fifth week of matches for the Play World Cup. Quick reminder, if you would like to make a donation, head to the website playworldcup.com.au, hit the donate button, do that good thing. Thank you very much to everyone who has donated. Let's head into this game. It is Desura versus Zero Seven. We are on the ruins of Tarsonis. Yeah. Yeah. And it is... Game two. That's right. And it's not the runs of Tarsonis, like I, I didn't originally read that Oz, and I was like, this map sounds disgusting. <laughs> but uh, here at the moment, and we see this very early uh, probe going out from Zant, uh, spawning as the yellow Protoss for Desura, um, and his teammate will be Henley, spawning as the orange Terran. Uh, and up top for zero seven, uh, we have two teams. We've got Flomad, who is the red Protoss, and to the left we have Agentus, who is the purple Zerg. Four zero seven. That's right. So I am interested in seeing what we uh, what this probe from Zant does. It came very early, so I would be expecting some cheese. But um, at the moment, usually I suppose if you were doing some cheese, you wouldn't reveal your probe. So um, I think he actually might be checking for cheese on zero seven Zant. It's probably worth. Noting that this is game two uh, of the best of three series, uh, and Desura uh, lost their first game, so this being week five, very important for them to to make sure they don't lose this next game if they want to, you know, try and keep their chances of staying in the competition. Absolutely, um, definitely a critical match. Week five basically decides who goes into the finals and who doesn't. So every game, absolutely critical to win. That's right, and so yeah. Um, that 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 uh, very early probe now from Zant coming back to the base, realizing there's there's no super early cheese or anything going on. From yeah, no zero seven, no six pool, nothing no. crazy like that. So no proxy gateways, nothing like that. So feeling a bit safe to come home and now probably resume uh, a relatively normal build. Although we are seeing a forge pop up, so maybe still feeling a little bit of the pressure and wanting to just get a little bit of our defense up first. No, the runs of. The runs of Tarsonis. Mm. It sounds like a plague to me. You know, like the Black Death. <laughs> like the runs of Tarsonis killed 800 Tarsonians <laughs> in a day. Oh, God. That is a messy town to live in. <laughs> it's a dark day for history. <laughs> it's a horrible, stinky day. <laughs> a brown day in history. <laughs> and here we see, again, Agentus coming out with his early lings. So I think um, Agentus has done this, I'm going to say, every game that we've seen um, which is actually like really good just not not over committing to the lings just putting out six nice and early to come and, and see if they can put on any pressure um, and you know punish punish teams for not walling off or anything like that I know we've seen a few times that Gen just sneak those lings into a base and, and just destroy mineral lines right at the very get go absolutely and, and crippling a, a team early like that can really give you such a huge advantage particularly in 2v2 but we see that Zant is uh, well prepared this time He's put the early cannon down. That's repelled those lings. So we are going to move into the game without any uh, mineral line destruction happening. That's right. Whoops. That's good. Hang on, don't mind me. Where the hell? <laughs> how do I set busy on this thing? I don't know, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> do it. There you go. You just pop it up. Pop it. Oh, here we go. Yeah, Hello. You got it. Busy. That's the way. I'm so busy. Nice. But uh, we do notice here that Jasura both have vision of these backdoor rocks, so um, that will be able to let them spot that if any of these Zerglings try and swing around the back and make some attacks on those rocks, they will have full vision of that. And we see that the Overlord is actually moving in here now. I'm not sure if that's intentional or not, but um, you can find, as that Cybernetics Core gets warped in, you can sometimes get caught um, with your Overlord in the middle of their base when you've rallied it, you know, minutes and minutes before and you've completely uh -huh. forgotten about it. Suddenly your supply block because that <laughs> thing's been taken down. Though it looks like he's controlling that now and he's sort of moving it away and toward the back. So even if a stalker came out now, it's probably going to be fine. He'll survive that. Unless these marines um, from Henley run over here and start shooting at it. But no, I think, no, he will make that. So should be fine. Lucky also gave him some good vision of the gas that's happening there. He may have even been able to see both gas guys as... Um, taken by assimilators, so yep. some good scouting info there and some good use of the overlords. So double gas usually indicates that you won't be seeing uh, anything, I guess it means they're going to be taking up, so I was going to say you won't be seeing anything too cheesy, um, but that may not necessarily be the case, okay. it just means you're not really going to be seeing a four gate attack, but we are seeing a twilight council uh, that is hidden, um, or is it, or is it, Agentus, yes, 
Oh, oh wow. Sneaky probe from Xanth being spotted, but the, the pylon uh, and the Twilight Council not spotted. Oh, that placement is insane. So I would say from this, James, that we are going to be seeing some Dark Templar pop out. We've got the two gas. Uh, DT is obviously very gas heavy. Um, and Xanth now. Now, where is he going to put this this uh, this Dark Shrine? He's placed oh. it right there. I am now interested. Is this going to be spotted from a Agentis? Oh, it is spotted. It is spotted. It is. You can see it. So... They know now, and I'm sure that Zant has not realised that no. that uh, watchtower is actually occupied. So, so I suppose it depends if Zero Seven's keeping a good eye on their mini map. This is a bright yellow dot, so hopefully they can see it. But um, I don't know. Nothing moving out yet. Nothing though. moving out. We're Ooh, still. Hang on, oh, speak wow. of the devil. Here's a couple of links coming so in. These links could be coming in to clear out that dark shrine, or not. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right, we're still at 50%. They've still got time. Do they have detection? That's probably the most important thing. We've got the Evo Chamber, so no uh, spore crawlers up yet, but they can be built. And we do have a Robo Bay with an Observer on the way. Okay, and so Photon Cannons. So it looks like they should be pretty much okay, um, even if Dark Templar do come out, but surely they would have seen that by now. Should be moving out any time. In the Go meantime, on. though, Agentis <laughs> has expanded... Oh, here comes a block of Zerglings. Maybe they're moving down to uh, do a bit of action on those. That, that Dark Shrine buildings. is going to finish. And then it's now finished. So I'd, I'd be expecting some DT to warp in here. And so these DT now might be able to start making... Here we go. Oh. Zergling coming across. Uh, maybe Kira. a little bit too late. It's going to kill that probe, though. Uh, trapping it in the corner. Very nicely done. But now the DTs on the map are going to probably cause a little bit of um, havoc. In the meantime as well, we see Henley moving up the middle of the map there, doing a little bit of a push with his Marines. Yeah, this could be a really nice poke here coming from Desura. Yeah, well-timed actually. You know, the combination of the Marines and that Dark Templar to sort of ward off anything. Um, and it looks like Agentis is a little underprepared here. Got Although we've got a ball of lings, but they are not speedlings. Oh. They're just regular slow. Is Henley going to focus down? No, so Henley's going to engage those Zerglings. Uh, and now these stalkers coming across with the observer in there, so that DT is going to get spotted. And we also see an overseer from Agentis, so getting all of the vision they need. These marines, are they going to be enough to take off these stalkers? No, the stalkers will just just have enough there to clear up that army. And we also see that Agentis has managed to take out that dark shrine, so we won't be seeing any more DTs from Zant for a while. That's right. So in the meantime, we also now see that um, repelling that push has put zero seven seven two bases in front. Yeah. We managed to save that hatchery, so the hatchery remains. And so they are, yeah, two bases to four at the moment. So a significant economic advantage coming up shortly for zero seven. 7 uh, So we're going to need to see Desura expand soon, or they will face some overwhelming... Uh, odds here as the army of zero seven 7 can expand much more quickly. Yeah, with that economic advantage. It was like that uh, that Dark Templar attack needed to do... So it's a sneaky play, sneaky tech play, but unfortunately just with that, that, that building of the, of the shrine, if it was just built on maybe this side um, of the Twilight Council, they might have got away with it, but um, even though zero seven 7 didn't attack it, I think they, they saw it and at least prepared for it. I think Zant was trying to take down his own forge then, and then he realised <laughs> that there was this... Wait a minute. <laughs> Hang on, friend. <laughs> Can you let me out? <laughs> Brilliant. It's like a cat at the front door, like just scratching the front door. <laughs> I'll either take this door down or someone will let me out. <laughs> yeah, that, I'm going to pee on the carpet. <laughs> it's up to you, buddy. <laughs> the number of times you've peed on the carpet... <laughs> And I haven't let you out. Just can't help myself. Disgusting. In yeah, the I've meantime, though, nice we... ball of Banelings here from Agentis as well. And we see the Baneling upgrade uh, just about to complete as well. So we also with plus one uh, attack on the um, on the Zerglings. So mm -hmm. we're going to see some upgraded Zerglings. I would like to see that uh, speed um, metabolic boost. Um, for the Zerglings be researched though I mean plus one Zerglings are good but unless they have the speed upgrade then they can get caught unawares there and taken out pretty quick there it goes Gentis listening to you there we go in the past hey I do coaching that's right <laughs> how much an hour uh, I'll settle for I don't know a beer? <laughs> beer an hour. That sounds <laughs> yeah. pretty good, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's reasonable. I'll take it. I mean, I will teach you the finest in Silver League play. <laughs> How to get to the mid-game and be crushed. Nice. 
Yes. Well, that's, so. what, that's what I can probably teach you uh, at the moment as well. My 1v1s are, are not going very well at all at the moment. <laughs> getting absolutely <laughs> dominated. But we are seeing Henley um, dropping a whole heap of sensor towers. By a whole heap, I do mean two. <laughs> but in normal play, that is a whole heap. <laughs> that is a whole heap. We have got a bit of overlap here. We can see on the sensor towers. Uh, this second one might have been a bit better placed over here just to get a, a, a wider range of coverage. Um, although we are seeing a nice poke out here from Desura. So opting not to expand and instead just focus more on their armies. Again. Uh, however, oh, oh, that is a lot of banelings. Uh, yeah, Flomad's Observer has scouted this army coming. So with all those banelings now, uh, I think Tashura are going to not fare too well in this engagement. Yeah, they're really going to need to retreat and definitely get a lot more units before trying to take on that wall of banelings. Otherwise, well, that's they're what just going to get Henley's got one crushed. siege tank, uh, needs a couple more. If Henley could get a nice siege line um, and maybe focus fire the banelings if they come down the ramp, but... Um, I'd say that these guys are going to have to attack up into the ramp, so uh, it's going to be hard to break through that wall of banelings without taking heavy, heavy losses. Absolutely. In the meantime, though, we see um, Agentus has actually completed his uh, spire and now is getting six mutilisks. Oh, here, here, here comes the engagement. the engagement. Banelings rolling in, doing so much damage, absolutely dominating that front line. A lot of damage there, but actually the, uh, the stalkers and... Um, well actually, a lot of the Marines did go down, but the Stork has absorbed a lot of damage from that ba from those Banelings. Um, Desura have actually got, you know, albeit a small army, but a lot larger than I thought they were going to have left. Um, yeah, that's not bad at all. I don't know whether it's going to be... If they focus down these Stalkers, we've got more Stalkers reinforcing from Zant, so they might be able to take apart 0-7's forces, but more Stalkers warping in from Flomad, and with these Mutus and Zerglings, I think they will clean that up from Desura. Wow, that, that battle ended up being a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, did, did those Banelings end up catching that uh, Immortal? I think it might have. So, um, yeah, a lot of their splash damage was wasted on the high-shielded Immortal rather than the squishy, squishy Marines. And the, the Immortal kind of has a cutoff, like... Uh, correct me here if I'm wrong, but the Immortal unit basically cuts off at a certain level of damage. So, like, you could hit it for, like, 400 damage and it only absorbs like 25 of that like it has some kind of threshold yeah, that makes it quite hard to kill if you have a high damage unit there is some sort of witchcraft involved like yeah they're great against um like so tanks so yeah i think they have that additional bonus against high yeah there is something as a, not a protoss player i don't know the exact mechanic i just know that tanks suck against them <laughs> as do marauders they just eat those, that stuff alive yeah it's really the uh low damage uh but fast rate of fire units that yep. do the damage against the immortal and unfortunately for banelings they are the extremely high damage one shot <laughs> that's right so the immortal able to tank a lot of that and i'm just looking back in henley's base and he's got a whole lot of tanks here that um if they had been brought up into that frontline engagement and could have focused fire down those banelings even more i think to sure would have been in a really strong position. If they could have um, kept a few more Stalkers and Marines alive in that engagement, they would have come off really well. In the meantime, though, we do see a couple of Phoenixes here from Flomad um, darting around the map, trying to find a, some vulnerable units here. Uh, Phoenixes? Picking up... Did I say Phoenixes? Oh, you did. I'm, I kind of want to say, like, Phoen, Phoen, Phoenix Eye or something. Phoen Eye. Phoen Eye? <laughs> I don't know. I think Phoenixes is probably correct, but... I think we can find them all awkwardly. Since when have we ever been correct? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Very oh, true. Oh, there's a nice uh, lift. Targeting those vulnerable siege tanks, not backed up by anything. Get those stalkers. And those stalkers are coming in. Oh, but the tank does go down. That's a nice tank snipe there by Flomad. Although uh, he will have to get those phoenixes out of there as the stalkers are chasing. Um, Flomad here with the observer. So having full vision once again of Desura's army, but... Now that we're this late in the game and Destura are still yet to expand, um, we did see Henley trying to expand, but it got shut down. Um, now 0-7 are really pulling away with their economic advantage and, and just getting the larger army. And uh, we also see that they've got quite an investment... Oh, uh, Agentis has quite an investment in the Mutalisks now. Um, so, you know, heading into the 20th minute here... Uh, I expect if he knows that there's no expansions, he's going to start darting in and trying to take out those workers, really just shut down uh, any potential for Sura to expand, That's right. for them to have any production whatsoever, and really just starve them of resources. Yep. Just use these mutilists to just constantly poke and harass and keep Sura's army you know, locked up in their base, basically. Um, and by checking that there's no expansions, although this zealot from Flomad is already doing that, but um, yeah, it just gives them total map control. And here, here we comes. can actually see Henley is... 
almost mined out in this main, so desperate to expand. And really, when you expand is when you're at your most vulnerable with workers, because they're going to have to transfer from one base to another, you have to provide cover for them, uh, and generally when a base is getting set up as well, you know, you've got... You have to reinforce that with your army, which means your army is out of position. That's right. And that makes it very, very difficult indeed, especially when you've got mutilists that are so fast, able to get around to different bases so quickly. And we see a lot of units here being lifted Phoenix up by the being Phoenixes. Very annoying. Zan's oh. rolling the GG. His whole army there essentially got lifted, and those mutilists were just tearing it apart. That was some really nice micro by Flomad. Just so many, so many units lifted up, and That's the good, uh, mutilists. Yeah, good unit con, uh, yeah. like. Um, yeah, that sort of nice... What's the word I'm looking for? Um, mix. Mix. Yeah, that Complimentary. Complimentary, yeah. They just go together really well. Both both units really fast flying, so both are able to keep up with each other as they fly around the map, and Phoenix is just stopping any any unit that tries to attack the Mutalist, and then the Mutalist tearing it apart. That's it. That's a really nice combination. So it looks like both players from Desura have called GG. Uh, we should see him leave any minute now, but that win for... Ah, uh, there it is. <laughs> and... Um, so that, that actually gives 0-7 the win here. Um, so they've won this encounter 2-0, um, which puts them squarely in the quarterfinals. That's right. Um, Desura um, will actually jump down to, I believe, somewhere near e the bottom. Equal ninth. Yeah. So that puts them right in position to a playoff match to stay in the tournament. So we might catch that one a bit later on, but in the meantime... Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter at, at Play World Cup. Uh, check out the Facebook page at Facebook.com slash Play World Cup. Mm -hmm. And thanks for watching. We'll catch you.